I'm Alice. And I'm Darren, and we're from UTEL, United Technologies Europe Limited. Want to know more about fibre optics? Well, we're here to help. In today's splicing video, we're going to look at what is a splice and when do I need one? The two main types of splicing, fusion splicing and mechanical splicing. The secret of a good splice. How do you actually do a fusion splice? And where can I get a more detailed guide on all of this? What is a splice? In simple terms, a splice is when you join the ends of two optical fibres together. This should form a strong, smooth connection so that when light passes through, it is not scattered or reflected back at the splice point, so there is minimal loss. When might you need to do a splice? A splice can be a cost-effective and time-effective solution when you need to attach a connector onto the end of a pigtail, you need to make your cable longer, or the cable becomes damaged. So rather than replace the whole cable, you want to cut out the damaged part and join the rest back together. There are two types of splice, fusion, and mechanical. Let's start with fusion splicing. In a fusion splice, the ends of the two fibres are melted or fused together to become one single cable. This creates a joint that, if done correctly, should be just as strong as the natural fibre. The completed splice is usually covered by a heat shrink plastic sleeve, which protects and strengthens the joint. How is this done? Here comes the technical part. First and most importantly, the fibres need to be stripped, cleaned and cleaved precisely. We'll cover this in more detail in our demonstration later. To fuse the ends of the two fibres together, you need heat, normally in the form of an electric arc. What is an electric arc? Well, according to encyclopedia.com, an electric arc is a device in which an electric current, that's a flow of electrons, is caused to flow between two points separated by a gas. Did you know that one example of an electric arc in nature is a lightning bolt? The heat can also be provided by a laser, gas flame or tungsten filament through which current is passed. A fusion splicer is a piece of specialised equipment that can do all of this for you. Mass fusion splicers can do a complete ribbon of fibre that's up to 12 splices in one go. We'll show you how to use a single fusion splicer later on in this video. The second type of splice is a mechanical splice, where fusion splicing moulds the ends of two fibres together to become one single fibre. Mechanical splicing is different. It just aligns the two fibres in the correct position and holds them precisely in place to allow the light to pass through. This is done by using plastic or glass alignment sleeve just larger than the fibres themselves, aided by the use of optical glue or index matching gel at the joint to reduce loss and reflectance. The fibres are not permanently joined together, just held firmly in place. So, how is this done? Just like with the fusion splice, the fibres need to be stripped, cleaned and cleaved precisely. For the mechanical splice itself, just purchase a commercially available mechanical splicing toolkit. Follow the manufacturer's guidance on how to insert the fibres correctly into the splice component and hopefully you'll get the optimum result. There are many different types available and plenty of YouTube videos to help you out if you're unsure. So which is better? Well, usually this comes down to a question of cost, use, quantity and performance. Let's look at the pros and cons of each. A fusion splicing machine is more expensive than a mechanical splicing kit and involves a certain degree of training to use. However, the cost of an individual fusion splice is significantly lower than a mechanical splice once you've purchased the machine, that is. A fusion splice, if done correctly, provides a continuous connection, thus offering a lower insertion loss, typically less than 0.1 decibels, lower reflectance, and thus a very high performance. This ensures a strong signal and better protection against cable failure. The loss in a mechanical splice is usually higher, typically between 0.2 and 0.7 decibels, and they have a higher reflectance. So from the previous screen, the obvious difference is that fusion splicing makes it one continuous fibre at the end, whereas a mechanical splice is simply just two fibres tightly and precisely held together. It is also preferable to use a fusion splice with single mode fibres, whereas a mechanical splice would typically be used for multi-mode fibres. Now on some occasions, it isn't practical or convenient to do either splicing procedure. 
For example, if you're an engineer balanced at the top of a distribution pole with a damaged connector hanging from the end of your cable. In this scenario, you would use a field fit connector. This is not as robust or waterproof as a fusion splice, but they can be installed in situ in a matter of minutes without the need of any machinery. There is, of course, a degree of skill involved in ensuring the connectors have a minimum insertion loss once installed, but it is a much more convenient solution in the field when required. So, what's the secret to a good splice? Here's the big reveal. The secret to a good splice is in the cleaving. You need a straight cleave on both fibres. This comes from having clean, well-maintained equipment and taking the time and effort to learn the proper techniques to use it. Before starting this demonstration, it is worth highlighting some of the health and safety priorities related to splicing, more details of which can be seen in our Health and Safety in Fibre Optics video. Remember, you are working with glass fibre, which can splinter and crack. If it does, the pieces are often so small that if it gets into your skin, you will struggle to see it, let alone remove it, which could lead to an infection and a trip to hospital. Gloves and safety glasses with side protection are recommended when doing a fusion splice to protect your eyes and hands from any splinters of glass, as well as from the chemicals on the cleaning wipes, which can irritate your skin. Next, it is very important not to eat or drink in any area where you're working with fibre optics. Shards of glass can get into the air and into your food and drinks, and if consumed, can cause serious internal injuries. Right, here comes the fun bit. Let's see a fusion splicer in action. What equipment do we need to complete a fusion splice? You will need a fusion splicer, a cleaver, some cutters and strippers, some IPA cleaning wipes, a heat shrink protective sleeve, and some fibre optic cable with matching core diameters. Firstly, you need to add your protective sleeve to the fibre. I'm using a 40mm sleeve, but they do come in a variety of lengths. Remember, you need to put the sleeve on at the very start. Otherwise, at the very end, you're going to be kicking yourself when you realise you need to do it all over again. Next, you need to strip off all the protection so you have just the bare fibre. Different cables have different sized cores, claddings, coatings, buffers, strength members, outer jackets, and a variety of different names to refer to all of these things so you need to know what type of fibre you're working with. Here are some examples. All of these have an identical 9 micron core but a variety of outer jacket sizes. From right to left we have 3mm outer jacket, 2mm outer jacket, 900 microns and a bare fibre. For this demonstration we're going to be using two 900 micron fibres. So here are the strippers I'm going to use. As you can see there are different size grooves on these strippers which can remove different layers of the plastic coating and are suitable for a range of fibre sizes. The best advice when stripping a fibre is to nibble away at the protective coating and remove it in small layers and sections. There are several different layers which you can see as you start to strip them away. You want to aim to strip off about 30mm of coating on both fibres for a good fusion splice. If you clamp too hard or try and remove too much in one go, you're very likely to just snap it like so. And here we have it. This is what a bare fibre looks like. If you run it through the strippers then there should be zero resistance. It's always worth double checking. Once you have stripped away all the protective layers, the next step is to clean the fibre. Hopefully you've already watched our video on the importance of cleaning fibres and the different tools out there to do this. Here we are using IPA wipes. You should hear the squeak when it's clean. Once clean, refrain from touching or putting the fibre in contact with any dirt. The dirty end will affect decibel loss and make the splice less effective. As we mentioned earlier, the cleave is the most important part of the whole process. We are trying to get a perfectly straight cut to allow the two fibre cores to make maximum contact with each other when they are fused together. First, Place the fibre into the appropriate V-group as indicated on the cleaver and flip down the magnetic panel to hold it firmly in place. You want to make sure that the bare fibre is sitting over the far left rubber pad as you can see here. By doing this the cut end of the fibre will be swept straight into the bin. Should this not happen you must remove the cut end from the machine manually using tweezers or sticky tape and place it in a sharp spin.
Once the fibre is held in position, in one smooth motion close the lid of the cleaver and press down the cleaver button like so. When you open the lid, you will see the cleaved fibre. Lift the magnetic panel and carefully remove the cleaved fibre from the cleaver. Remember, from this point on you do not want it to be touching anything as this may damage or dirty the clean cut you just made. Make sure your fusion splicer is powered on by pressing the red button and that all the settings are correct for your chosen fibre type. This can be changed like so. Lift up the dust weather guide and wait as the machine makes its automatic adjustments. Lift up the magnetic flap and place your cleaved fibre into the V-groove, making sure that the tip of the fibre does not cross over the electrode. Placing the fibre can be trickier than it looks, as it has a natural curve to it, but persist. Flip down the magnetic flap to hold the fibre in place once you are happy. At this point, start the whole process over again with the second fibre and load this into the other side of the splicer. Once both are in place, close the dust weather guard. The fusion splicer will move the fibres in towards each other and an image of the two fibre tips will be displayed onto the screen for you to examine. This is your chance to make sure your cleaves are neat and clean. If your fibres are positioned too far from the electrodes, then an image will not show on the screen for that fibre. If either fibre tip crosses the electrode, then an error message will appear. If you're happy with your cleaves, then press the green button. You will hear a beep and this will start the splice process. The fusion splicer will line up the cores of the fibre to join them together and do a quick automatic pre-clean of the fibres to blow away any dust residue before it begins the actual splice. It will also report any errors if it cannot perform the splice. Your fibres have now been spliced together. The screen will display either a green, amber or red light to signify whether the splice is good, ok or poor, as well as showing an estimated dB loss. For a green light and a perfect splice, you would have a 0 dB loss, but ideally no more than 0.2 dB for it to be successful. If you get an amber light, common reasons for this are that one or both of the fibres were dirty, that the cleaves were not straight enough, or that there is a mismatch in the core dimensions of the fibres. Here are some pictures of some of these errors. Here we can see examples of good cleaves, bad cleaves, which could be due to dirt and dust or the fact that the cut is not straight, and some fibres that are not cleaved at all. Make sure you do not open the cover until the splice is complete and the machine has beeped. Lift the lid, but wait a few seconds as the fusion splicer will be completing a tension test on the fibre. Carefully, we remove the fibre. At this point, we do not wish to bend or pull on the fibre as it could snap and undo everything we have just done. Gently slide the protective sleeve over the splice. Make sure you have an even amount of clad fibre on both sides to ensure there is an equal amount of strength on either side of the splice. Lift up the lid on the heater element and carefully place the splice with its protection sleeve into the heater, ensuring it is in the centre of the heater element. Close the lid making sure you do not get the fibre core underneath the two metal latches on the side as when you push them down they could snap the fibre. If you haven't already make sure you've closed the magnetic flaps and the dust weather guard down again to keep the fusion splicer clean. The machine will automatically start to heat the plastic. You will know it's working as the light next to the yellow heater indicator shines red and the heater symbol in the top right of the screen shows you the progress. You are able to change the heat settings depending on the thickness of the protective sleeve you are using. It's worth checking you are on the right setting before you start as you may burn your sleeve. When complete, wait 15 to 20 seconds for the glue to harden, then remove the splice using caution as it could still be very hot. And there you have it, a completed fusion splice. There should be no bubbles inside the protective sleeve, which would indicate overheating or no upturned ends on the protective sleeve, which would indicate not enough heat. You should be able to see a small amount of glue coming out from each end. Perfection. In the real world, splices need to be kept in protective cases, conveniently called splice trays, which are then placed inside a splice closure. You can see some examples of splice trays here with their lids open or removed, including one known as the bomb in the center of the bottom row. The splice tray protects the splices from moisture and ensures they are not being put under any unnecessary pressure or tension. Some patch panels have splice trays built into them to simplify storage. So that's it. In today's video we discovered that 
Splicing can be a cost-effective and efficient way to join two fibre optic cables together to form a strong, smooth connection with minimal loss and high performance. Mechanical and fusion splicing both have their benefits and uses, and with the correct equipment and a small amount of training, you can do this for yourselves. Want to find out more? Then download our free step-by-step -step guide to fusion splicing from the UTEL website. Or, while you're here, you might find it useful to watch some of our other videos such as cleaning tools and techniques, types of fibre optic cable and most importantly, health and safety with fibre optics. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to check out the rest of our videos in this series and maybe even subscribe to our channel. For more about what we do, why not check out Utel's website or get in touch. But from all of us here at Utel, thank you for watching and see you again soon.